Portland is the 18th team in Major League Soccer. This is the City of Portland's championship. It is great to be home. Sports Sunday with Orlando Sanchez. That's right, another crazy week in the NFL. We've got a pair of bizarre stats that you didn't know, but desperately needed in your life. <laughs> Plus, they're playing football in the Pac-12, the nuts and bolts of a different season. And Stan, Kyle, Cartman, Kenny in the stands where the South Park kids and a few friends took a game today. Oh, it feels so good to be back. What is good, everyone? My name is Orlando Sanchez, and this is Sports Sunday. Art Edwards, keeping it socially distant. <laughs> yes. He won't tell me where he's hiding. No, no, that's a guarded secret. I'm starting to take <laughs> things a little personally, man. Everything good in your world? Everything's good. All right, we got a stacked show, so let's get things moving. The legend of Russell Wilson continues to grow. All offseason, fans were pushing to let Russ cook. Well, it's happening at a historic pace. Century Link Field we go. The Seahawks hosting the Cowboys. Crazy first quarter. There was a safety, a missed extra point. Then this, DK Metcalf. Oh, he put it into cruise control. Got the ball punched out. Instead of a touchdown, it's a touchback Cowboys ball. Second quarter, Seahawks settle down and take control. Wilson hooks up with Tyler Lockett for three touchdowns in this game. Seattle went up by 15 in the third thanks to the man from Bend, Oregon, Jacob Hollister, finding the end zone. But just like most Seahawks games, it comes down to the wire. The Cowboys rally to take the lead. Dak Prescott threw for 472 yards, 31-30 advantage Dallas. So Wilson takes the Seahawks on an eight play, 75 yard drive in two minutes. This one to DK Metcalf, a little redemption for the go ahead score. But just like last week, the game was in the balance in the final second. So here we go. It took a stop on defense to secure the victory. Dak Prescott for the win, but it's picked off by Ryan Neal. Third forced turnover of the day. Seahawks win 38-31. Back-to-back five touchdown games for Russell Wilson. He's now thrown 14 touchdown passes in the first three games. That's the most in NFL history. And the Seahawks are 3-0 for the first time since 2013. Oh yeah, that was the year they won the Super Bowl. I've been through highs, I've been through lows, I've been through it all. And, and uh, you know, there's nothing really that can get to me, to be honest with you. And so for me, it's just... You know, stay in the moment. Stay right here in this play. The biggest thing that everybody could figure out about this team and about Russ is that we're always going to find a way. You know, the, the Seahawks are known to figure it out on that last drive when it always matters. I know it's terrible for the fans. They're all, you know, you know, tearing their hair out and all that. But, you know, I always tell you, man, you got to suck it up. <laughs> this is the way it is. The win comes at a price, though. There was a long list of injuries for the Seahawks, including Jamal Adams, who left the game with a groin injury, and then this play right here involving running back Chris Carson, who had his knee twisted up. Oh, okay, take the video away. Art Edwards, your thoughts on the performance today, and what do you think about the Seahawks and what they had to say about this is just who we are, this is our identity. Games are going to be close. Yeah, I'd like to see them have a different identity. You know what? <laughs> the identity that has them get way ahead and they don't get make it close in the end. You know what? I'm not happy about the fact that the defense really has had to come through uh, a couple of games in a row to save the day. Don't you remember? It used to be Legion of Boom. Like, that's who they were. And now it's just, let's jump on Russell Wilson's back yes. and see what happens. Art, I want to ask you about Russell Wilson. I mean, he just continues to amaze this season. Yeah, he is really in, in just simply incredible. I mean, those the long passes, the way he just drops them right in there, the, the level he's playing at right now. I mean, if they, it, you know, it's too early to name an MVP, but I tell you what, he's sort of distancing himself from everybody else right now. He's just playing amazing ball. It's really neat to see him do this on this stage against the Dallas Cowboys and other teams. 
because it's forcing the rest of the country to take notice of a player who's in the Pacific Northwest. Some right. of these games are at 10 a.m. and he's stunting so hard that it's forcing everyone to pay attention. Yeah, you got to see what he's doing. I mean, it, it's it's the greatest show on turf right now, it seems like. And let's see if they can keep this up. They're now 3-0 and on the season. Yeah. All right, Art, let's go up to CenturyLink Field where we're joined by NBC Sports Northwest Seahawks insider Joe Fan, who gives us his big takeaways from the press. Orlando, thank you. Yes, another wild game at CenturyLink Field for the second straight week. The Seahawks doing just enough defensively to get the job done in the game's final minutes. Last week, it was the goal line stand against Cam Newton. This week, it's Alton Robinson's first career sack. And Ryan Neal just called up from the practice squad, Ryan Neal's first career interception, icing the game. 38-31 was the final. The defense still a complete liability. Bobby Wagner and Shaquille Griffin said as much post game. Those two far more somber than celebratory following the win. And Bobby Wagner, he used the Seahawks winning games because of the defense not despite the defense. And so this is really a unique shift for him and something that doesn't sit real well with him. But it's Russell Wilson again, carrying this team to ridiculous levels. 315 yards, five touchdowns. He's setting NFL records right now. Through three weeks, he's got 14 touchdowns, most ever for a quarterback. He's also the first quarterback in NFL history to have at least four touchdown passes in each of his team's first three games. So again, this team is 3-0 right now. They're atop the NFC West. Jamal Adams, Chris Carson, Jordan Brooks, just a few of the names added to the ever-growing injury report for the Seahawks. Those are all situations you want to follow throughout the week. We'll have it all covered this week on NBCSportsNorthwest.com. Next up for the Seahawks, a road game against the Miami Dolphins and Fence Magic down in South Beach. Orlando, back to you. Appreciate it, Joe. Nice work from the press box. You can follow him on Twitter as well. Joe Fan, NBC Sports Northwest. All right, it's time for Hyundai to take us around the NFL and some of the most interesting games from the day. We got to start down in Southern California. Rookie of the week, that man Justin Herbert making his second straight start for the Chargers facing the Carolina Panthers. Some growing pains along the way for the rookie. End of the first half and uh-oh, that's one he's going to want back. That's an interception, and he nearly brought it back to the house for a TD. They ended up kicking a field goal. Fourth quarter we go, and Herbert finds his groove. The Chargers come alive. Great 14-yard touchdown pass there. That was a bullet to get the Chargers within five points. Herbert drove L.A. down for one last chance. And it looked good. The hook and ladder, though, just off the mark. I mean, he had a chance to score. The Chargers fall 21-16. Herbert threw for 330 yards. He's the third quarterback since the merger to throw for 300 yards in his first two starts. Art, what are you working with? Hey, LA's other team, the Rams, heading out to upstate New York to take on the Buffalo Bills, a battle of undefeated teams. This was a wild game. Buffalo built a 25-point lead in the third quarter. Looked like they were in good shape. But the Rams, of course, had other ideas in this one. Los Angeles battled back, and they were able to take the lead with four and a half minutes left in the game on this play right here. Oh. But there was a pass interference call with 20 seconds left in the game against the Rams and set up the winning touchdown pass for the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen. Buffalo wins at 35-32. Allen through four touchdown passes. Look out for Allen. The disrespect that that man had to deal with, and he is doing work. Upstate New York to Minneapolis now. The winless Vikings hosting the undefeated Titans. And the Titans fell behind early, had to battle back in the second half. Derrick Henry leads over the line for the score to put Tennessee on top. He's helping my fantasy team out. Thank you very much for that. The Vikings had some life left, though. Kirk Cousins. The pass to put Minnesota up by five in the fourth quarter. How about those Vikings? But too much time left for the big leg of Tennessee. Steven Goskowski booted six field goals. Titans win at 31-30. First time they've been 3-0 to start the season since 2008. Vikings fall to 0-3. Wow, <laughs> man, it's now time to travel to Arizona for a matchup between the Cardinals and the Lions. Kyler Murray off to a fast start for the Cards so far this year. Another strong game in the first half of the ball game. Murray with that 13-yard touchdown pass. He had two touchdown passes, but also three interceptions today. That's not Lions good. kept chipping away at it, and late in the fourth quarter, Matt Prater nails a 39-yard field goal. The Lions hand Arizona its first defeat, 26-23. Look at us showing love to the kickers. Yeah. All right, it's time now to take a look at the players and teams that had good days and those with, well, 
not so good days. Crazy things happened in week number three. We start with Fitz Magic. Back in the Dolphins win over the Jaguars, our first hero, Ryan Fitzpatrick, became the first QB to beat the same team as the starting quarterback of six different teams. This is crazy. Fitzpatrick has now beaten the Jaguars as a member of the Dolphins, Bengals, Bills, Titans, Texans, and Jets. We call Ooh. that job security. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, our next hero is the Bears' Nick Foles. He replaced Mitch Trubisky in the third quarter of the ball game against the Falcons, and he led the Bills, I mean, rather the Bears, to a 30-26 come-from-behind win. Foles tossed three second-half touchdown passes in that victory. My goodness, I've heard yeah. that song before. All right, as good as it, as it was for Foles, we have to look at the Falcons as zeros. The Falcons gave up a 16-point lead the last six and a half minutes of the game. Atlanta is the first team in NFL history to lose back-to-back -back games that they led by 15 or more points in the final period. Ouch. Yeah, ouch is right. Hey, our final zero, both the Bengals and the Eagles get this one. Both teams enter the game 0-2. And neither came away with a win today. Oh. The game ended 23-23. Both teams 0-2-1. Oh, and one. All right, how are you going to do them like that? You gave, <laughs> you handed out two zeros. Two zeros. <laughs> oh, man. See, don't mess with art. No. All right, still to come. After a lot of debate, there will be Pac-12 football this fall. We've got everything you need to know about this shortened season. And later, the stage is set in the bubble. We're down to two. Who's playing for the NBA championship? That's coming up. And welcome back to Sports Sunday. I've said this a few times. This is really happening. The Pac-12 is playing football this fall, Art. The Ducks and Beavers are less than six weeks away from kickoff. Let that marinate. The season starts the weekend of November 6th. The plan is for every team to play seven games with the Pac-12 championship game on December 18th. The conference feels like that would be enough to be part of the college football conversation. Both schools have received their machines that will allow for rapid testing for COVID-19. Oregon State Athletic Director Scott Barnes says they should be ready to administer those tests early next week. That is a big deal in all of this. Almost every player at Oregon and Oregon State are back on campus. The Ducks and Beavers will both start training camp around October 9th. As you can imagine, after months away from the game, both teams fired up to finally play again. I'm definitely excited. I mean, just meeting with the team, even today, seeing them working out this morning. Um, there's a genuine excitement across the entire program. Now, you know, players, coaches included. Excitement, um, want to get after it, uh, you name it. You know, it's on, but the intensity is cranked up. You could feel it in the Zoom team meeting when uh, play was announced. So the Ducks are getting ready to get after it. And at this point, fans will not be allowed to attend games. The schedule is expected to be released sometime next week. Oregon Athletic Director Rob Mullins, he was not in favor of playing games at 9 a.m. So you can forget all about that if it's up to the Ducks. Art, do you think it works for the Pac-12 Conference to start in November and play just seven games? I, you know, I think it does work all right for the conference. You know, and I, it might make it a little bit hard for them to get into the college football playoff, get somebody from the Pac-12 in. But I think they're doing the right thing. You know, they're going to play a limited schedule. They're just trying to keep it as tight and compact as they can and make sure that the student athletes are going to be safe through all of this. I know I was wondering, would this be enough time? And hearing from Jonathan Smith this week, he, him saying that his team is ready to go. They're already in shape. They feel good about where they're going. They'll have four weeks of training camp. Does that make you feel okay knowing that the schedule still lines up and they should be all right to play a game in six weeks? Yeah. I think, you know what, I, I think it'll be okay. The bottom line is it's about the same for everybody in the, in the conference, so you, you have to deal with it. And the Oregon Ducks, they're opening up ranked 14th by the yep. Associated Press. It's going to be fun to watch the Ducks play and see how well they do. They've lost four players who have committed to the yeah. NFL draft. So let's see how good this team is with so many young players. Art, that bubble life is getting way less crowded in the NBA. The finals are set. Who is going to rule the month of June or a few months later? Whatever. What month is it? Anyway, we'll try and figure that out on the other side. Now Klingberg at the back holds and drives one. And that rebound right around in front of Perry. They jam away. They score! The Stars win in double overtime. We're 
so spoiled in the NHL. <laughs> what a game in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Corey Perry slips it into the back of the net for the game winning goal. The Dallas Stars beat the Tampa Bay Lightning 3 to 2 in double overtime to force a game six. You can see that game right here on KGW tomorrow night. And that is also your Toyota Sunday sizzle. Welcome back to Sports Sunday. Now there are just two NBA teams left in the NBA bubble. They'll battle for an NBA championship. Today, the Miami Heat finished off the Boston Celtics for the Eastern Conference Championship. Miami was down by six in the fourth quarter before they just straight up flipped the switch. Bam Adebayo scored a season high 32 and grabbed 14 rebounds. Miami won the game 125-113 to take the series four games to two. And now they'll meet with the Los Angeles Lakers in the NBA Finals. Game one on Wednesday. Well, the Major League Baseball playoffs are now set for the 19th time in 19 years. The Mariners, they are not in the postseason. Sorry, M's fans. Here's who is in, in the American League. Top seed Tampa Bay going to face the Toronto Blue Jays. The Indians will face the Yankees. And the Astros, they are in even though they played fair. They'll face Minnesota. Did they? Do we know? Well, we think so. <laughs> and over in the National League, the Dodgers, well, they're the heavy favorites. They get the Brewers in the first round and could potentially see the Padres in round two. San Diego went all, went all in at the trade deadline and is in the postseason for the first time since 2006. And we got a little Timbers news right now. They were playing over at Providence Park against Cascadia Cup rival Vancouver. The game is... Uh, over now, Portland Timbers win it 1-0. So that's their second shutout in a row. They were playing the match here, but it was really a home match for the Whitecaps. We'll be right back. This is great. The Denver Broncos had some fun with the fan cutouts. You know, they placed them in the stands, upper level, the end zone, a mile high up with cutouts of South Park characters clad in masks for the game against the Buccaneers. Show creators Trey Parker, Matt Stone, our big Broncos fans, the cutout fans attended the game alongside about 5,700 <laughs> actual human beings. Art, that was awesome stuff, and you did a great job yes. tonight. But we've got to go. We leave you with our plays of the week. Champion, my opponents hate it. The throne is for the take. It's so close, I can taste it like. Klingberg at the back, holds, and drives one. And that rebound right around in front, Perry. They jam away. They score! The Stars win in double overtime. He'll take a three. LeBron James will hit a three. Oh, how about it? Going for the fade in the end zone. Wingo just checked into the game. Sammy shoots a little bit too strong. The follow by Parker. 